Hello and good morning friends welcome to the CC Edisit live lecture dear friends we would like to tell you that from today onwards we are starting a very new series and this series is on business research method methodology since this is the first lecture so we uh, believe that uh, this would be an introductory lecture where we would be talking on significance of research and its relevance in uh, everyday life as well as we would be discussing on purpose of research and uh, uh, the concepts relating to research and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios um, a dynamic professor dr namita rajput who has been uh, recently adorned uh, with the uh, title of uh, principal and she is a principal in uh, sri aurobindo uh, evening college university of delhi so let's welcome our guest dr namita rajput hello ma'am welcome to the set lecture good morning friends so today we are going to start with a new lecture series on the business research methodology and introduction now business research as we all know is the basic concept which every business is interested into and research is such a topic which is very important for all of us to understand research is such a methodology which is accepted by everyone in today's contemporary world and research is needed on every small parameter when you talk about every walk of life whether it is an undergraduate school or is a 11th standard or 12th standard or a basic school whether you are interested to become as a professor or you are interested to become as a teacher or a doctor or for example any kind of a politician or a ministry or whatever in every walk of life the research is the basic premise which everyone needs and this is the need of today also because then when you research you have a informed choices with you and with the informed choices the decisions which you take are more relevant they are more pertinent and they are more accurate because they are based on the facts and the data which has been collected on the various parameters and grounds now when you talk about research research is very important in every walk of life and no matter you are a undergraduate or a postgraduate student of business and management or a manager in every field and the sphere of life no one best for undertaking all type of research there is no one best way that means we are available with n number of ways and as far as the number of ways are concerned these ways are so important and the informed choices are available with us and whether to accept or to reject a particular hypothesis or a research parameter or a basic foundation there are so many informed choices with us there are so many pedagogies with us there are so many methodologies with us so it is on the basis of the parameters which we have to decide that this is the best method and this is not the best method there are so many good methods so many softwares which are available nowadays that if you put the data into them they will give you the accuracy and the foundation of your research which are exactly empirical in nature and nobody can doubt about your research activities because the it is based on the exact facts which you have collected on the basis of questionnaire or on the basis of interactive interviews or on the basis of the secondary data which is available on the government websites journals magazines etc so no one best way is available as far as the research is concerned now there are various research philosophies and approaches Uh, and basically the reasonings and explored strategies the techniques and the procedures with which you can tackle your research project so that means there is no one particular method of doing a research every individual collects the information on the basis of your own objectives on the basis of your own philosophy so definitely the objective which you select and the and the data which you will collect will suit only you so that means there are various philosophies which will add to your knowledge and it is very specific in nature for example if i collect a data so it is not of that importance to you because you might have a different objective and you might have a different parameter you might have different frontiers and horizons on the basis of which you will collect the data whereas whichever data i will collect i will have my own objectives i will have my own parameters and definitely the results which i want to infer they are different and the results which you want to uh, you know in for they will be different because the basic premise and the objectives on the basis of which you collect the research are also different so learning the research methodology makes you able to make a series of informed choices including your research philosophy approaches to reasoning strategies techniques and procedures that are most suitable to your own research work and be able to justify them so this is a very important parameter which we are going to discuss here 
Like for example, I collected the data, I applied a particular business research method and a technique. The results which I will obtain will justify my reasons, my questions and my philosophies. It is definitely, uh, you know, not really, it will not be a good choice for you because you might have a different parameter and the different uh, philosophy on the basis of which you will collect your data. So this is definitely one aspect of the research is that it is very specific in nature. Yes, you can have the generalized aspect also, but definitely you have applied research also. So we'll come on to the various types of research later on when we discuss the types of research. But yes, the one foundation statement on the research is that it is very specific to your own philosophies, to your own pedagogies and methodologies, and no one can take your own parameters and no one can justify their choice on the basis of what the others have collected. Now taking it forward, many a times the term research methods and the research methodologies are used interchangeably. We use the term methods to refer to techniques used to obtain and analyze data. This therefore includes the questionnaires, observations and the interviews as well as both quantitative and qualitative. The quantitative is statistical in nature and qualitative is non-statistical in nature. So they are called as the analysis techniques. The analysis techniques are basically uh, the, the basis for which you will collect the data and you will analyze the results. In contrast, the methodology refers to, uh, to the theory of how research should be undertaken, that is the procedure. So there is a difference between the research methods and the research methodology. So keeping it more deep uh, in this aspect, so let us have a concept of this once again. The research methodology is basically we refer to the techniques on the basis of which we analyze the data, whereas the methodology refers to how the research should be undertaken, that is it will always focus the procedure which is adopted to take on to the research. Now coming on to the nature of research or the characteristics of research, this is very, very important to have uh, the basic understanding of research, the foundation of research, the different choices of research, the difference between the methodology and the methods because all these things will be treated as a foundation when you move on to a particular technique and when you will actually apply these technique in practice. So theory, theoretical backdrop is very important for a practical thing to be success. So in this backdrop, we will you know, explain you the nature of research. Now the research, results of research are all around us. When listening to the radio, watching the television or reading a daily newspaper, it is difficult to avoid the term research. Different ways of interpretation by different sources. The politicians often justify their policy decisions on the basis of research. The newspaper reports, the findings of academic research, documentary programs tell us about research findings. Advertisers may highlight the results of research. So in this particular point which we are discussing now, it is very clear that research is touched by every sphere of our life, with every kind of profession and business, in every spheres of knowledge which is all around us. Right from listening to the radio, to the reading of newspapers, while writing the research papers, while advertising, uh, you know, by the advertisers in the market research, everywhere the research is used. Because the research findings are accurate and people have a belief that whatever are the research findings, they make sense to you. Because the research findings are not done in the air, they have a deep method, they have an analysis method and they have a deep reasoning apply, application of which you will find out the best results in front of you. So this is the importance and the nature of research that it is all pervasive in nature, it is sphere, uh, touching every sphere of life and it is definitely a part and parcel of our basic life, it is baked in our daily life culture as well. Now coming on to a meaning of research, now there are two connotations to it, one what is not called as research and second what is called as research. Now any kind of an accidental recovery or discovery of something 
cannot be called as a research. For example, I am into any kind of a, you know, a library and I come across so much of information, I collect that information. So my collection of information is not research unless and until I try to infer something out of it. Only mere collection and culmination of the information will cannot be called as a research. Number two, just collecting the facts or the information with no clear purpose is not called as a research. Reassembling, reordering of the facts or information without interpretation as an esoteric activity with no or little relevance to everyday life. So, coming on to uh, the basic parameters of research that what is not called as research, in this we have understood that mere collection of the information and the facts is not called as research, number one. Number two, if you do not have the objective, it will also not be called as a research. Number three, mere collection of the information is also not called as a research. And definitely, last but not the least, you must have certain relevance behind it at the backdrop of research. So unless and until a relevance is attached to a research, it is not called as a research. So these are the key aspects which everyone should keep in mind because only then the concepts of research will be very clear to you. Since this is an introductory chapter, you must be very crystal clear about the basic foundations of research. So we are giving stress on what is a research and what is not a research. Although research often involves the collection of information, it is more than just reading a few books and articles, talking to few people or asking people certain questions. While collecting the data may be a part of research process and if it is not undertaken in a systematic way without a clear purpose, it will not be seen as a research that is the common parallels in many reports. Collecting data without interpretation, collecting data without any relevance and it does not influence our daily lives and creates our understanding of the world. And of course, the term research can be used to get an idea or the product noticed by the people. No clear research process is definitely followed because people have their own ways and means to collect the data and it will suit individual research work, not a, you know, on a general parallel that we can define that this is a research. Now we have understood the concept of research. We have understood what are the basic purpose on the which, on the basis of which we will call as what is not a research. So what is then research is all about? So let us have a deep insight of what research means. So research has a number of characteristics. One, data are collected systematically. Two, data are interpreted systematically. Three, there is a clear purpose of the goals for thereby increasing their knowledge and two phrases are important in this definition, systematic way and goals. So what is systematic? Systematic means what? It suggests that research is based on a logical relationship and not just beliefs. Proper examination that is why of a method or methods used to collect the data. Why the results obtained are meaningful and explain the limitations that are associated with it. So it is has, again has got a deep meaning. When you collect the information, only the information without any objective, without any planned method, without any relevance, it is definitely not research. So for a research to be called as a research, you must be having a systematic way of doing it, systematic you know, methods to collect it, then systematic relevance and objective behind it. And if you are well versed with all these things, then definitely that piece of work will be called as research. The relevance is important. The outcomes of research is important. The way it is collected is important. So these are the key parameters for a particular piece of work to be called as research. Otherwise, it is mere uh, you know, gathering of the information which has got no meaning and relevance, which has got no objective and further applicability of your work. So these are the things which a researcher has to be very clear about that whenever he starts doing research, one, he should have an objective. Two, he should have a planned way of doing it. Number three, he should have a relevance. And number four, the outcomes and the, the results of the research must be meaningful for a particular section of society. Otherwise, your work is irrelevant in nature and has got no meaning behind it. 
Now certainly the goals suggest that there are multiplicity of possible purposes of your research. It is therefore an activity which means that it has to be finished at some time to be of use. There has to be a clear purposes may include describing, explaining, understanding, criticizing and analyzing. So there is another uh, parameter added here which I will explain you that we have already uh, covered the concept of research. What are the work which are not called as research and what is the work which can be called as research. Now there is another aspect which needs explanation that when you called that your purpose should be clear behind it, it could be even the criticizing the ongoing policies of the government, ongoing objectives uh, behind any of the goals and the programs of the government or for that matter the public policy etc. So for example the budget comes and you are you know analyzing the budget that it is good for females or it is good for working professionals or it is not good for the salaried class or whatever that is whether it is progressive in nature it is regressive in nature which factor will be will be hardly uh, you know hit it by the uh, budget so on and so forth this kind of analysis that is when you are doing collection information analyzing criticizing gathering is also called as a research because you are not only collecting the information about a particular policy matter or for that matter a budget or any other example in this case but yes you are criticizing the government policy you are adding your own uh, comment to it you are adding your own observations to it so when you are observing analyzing criticizing this is also will be called as a research now coming on to the business and management research. Now as you all know we are living in a cutthroat competition, we are having a cosmopolitan lifestyle, we are having immense competition at every small level. There is an online business going on, there is an e-commerce going on, there is a click and the motor business, there is a click and a brick business, there is an international business, there is a domestic business, there is a local business and the name and the list is unexhaustive. So, Keeping this backdrop under this, the relevance of research has come out to be immense and very strong and very significant. Why? Because if you want to outshine in the market, if you want to penetrate in the market, your facets should be good, your facts should be good and on the basis of the facts which you collect, the culmination of all the information which you collect from the market competitors, the market policy, the government policy, the, the basic uh, products which are existing in nature and if you want to analyze whether you can be a good player or a bad player. So in this parallels, the importance and the significance of the research is all the more, more important in nature. Because you know when you talk about research there is an application of economics, there is an application of commerce, there is an application of research, there is an application of statistics, operational research and there are again the list is not exhaustive. So you have to culminate uh, and add on and collect all types of information together and there are so many disciplines which are involved and outcomes are definitely very good because they are going to give you a very clear cut information that yes whatever you are going to start with uh, will it be a success or a not. So the probability of success and the probability of a failure is a very simple answer which will be given by your extensive research work. So we see and we can say that there is a significant importance of application of business research methods in doing a business and doing the management practices at a larger scale. When you talk about research it is as I have already added it is a transdisciplinary you know because you have to have the application, you have to write the reports, you have to use the statistics, you have to play with the numbers, you have to know the computer savvy, you have to have a complete information about how to run that software. So unless and until you have everything in front of you, you cannot be a good researcher. For example, I am a commerce professor and I know uh, the management principles and if I uh, add to my knowledge that how to do research, how to apply the principles uh, of research into the principles of management, it is going to have a magnificent impact on the report writing. Because the report writing, the, the results, the results which are shown by the research are always the numbers 
and the numbers are of no use unless and until somebody interprets it, somebody analyzes it. And if you want somebody to analyze it, definitely that person must have a complete knowledge about that subject. So even if you talk about the commerce or economics, you have to have a complete knowledge of the sociology, about the economics, about the commerce, about the business policy, about the research methods together. And if you have everything, of course, the results which are in front of you will be significant to you and the applications of which will be very, very important to make the business a success. So these things and these aspects are very critical and they are very pivotal to understand, to make the policies, to make the strategies, etc. So if you have everything, you can develop your own ideas, you can develop your own methods and of course uh, some kind of new insights will emerge that is going to make you uh, a hero in the market or for that matter a major market player in the market and others will be rooted out because they don't know how to apply the research methods. And definitely uh, again coming on to the significance of research, the research gives you the informed choices and if you apply the right choices at right time with the right people of course the market penetration ratio would be more and you would be definitely outshining with your competitors and your competitors will be lower than you and this is what your perspective and this is what the importance of business research is all about. Now how business research should be? Research should complete a virtuous circle of theory and practice. Practically derived theory this is turning becomes a blueprint for the managerial practice. According to Hawkinson, in 2001, there are many dimensions which can be formed using theoretical and methodological rigor and the practical relevance. Now, I would like to give it, uh, you know, a kind of an explanation in this regard. There, there, there are so many economists, so many people, so many psychologists, so many philosophers, so many economists. They have given only this kind of a view that only the theory and only the practice is not good. There has to be a judicious combination of the theory and practice together that definitely will have a significant impact on whatever you do, whatever relevance you want to put into the practice. Now, for example, I teach you how to do a research. So this is the theoretical backdrop of it, which is very important, which will be endorsed to you by me. And then, of course, when you know how to do it theoretically, to make it practical becomes more important and more easier for you. So, th having a theoretical backdrop, having a theoretical knowledge is all the more important with the judicious competence and the combination of the practice also. So, a judicious and a right competition, uh, combination of the theory and practice will make it more relevant, will make it more rigorous and will make it more practical. So, this is uh, the importance of having this kind of a judicious combination. Now there are certain sciences uh, like pediatric sciences, popular sciences, then puerile sciences, pragmatic sciences which also says the same thing that is the, uh, the hurdle of being both theoretical and methodological rigorous while being of practical relevance becomes socially useful. Now coming on to the Gibson's model 1 and 2 of knowledge creation. In mode 1 he says Research in which the questions are set and solved by the academic interest emphasizing a fundamental rather than applied nature where there is a little if any focus on utilization of research by practitioners. This is the mode 2 that is the research governed by world of practice matches the supply side of knowledge represented by universities together with the demand side represented by business. Subsequently, there is another mode 3, knowledge creation based on power and patronage become particularly visible in close relationship with the sponsor and researcher, for example, of pharmaceutical industry. Then mode 3, the knowledge production focuses on appreciation of the human conditions, that is, it should be socially useful also. The business and management research might also have a societal consequences, that is, the CSR consequences. So here we have seen the relevance and the various modes of research and its practical, uh, you know, significance in terms of social, uh, socially important. Now, what is the basic and the biggest dilemma faced in the business research? According to Rousio 2006, it draws attention towards the research practice gap. Failure of organizations and managers to base practices 
on the ba on the best available evidences that means they are not into practice at all so definitely there is a big gap between the theory and the practice so this is going to be give them a good dilemma which is not good for them and also not good for the society so if you know something you must practice it so at the grassroot level the managers should take initiative to practice the research and the research pedagogies and methodologies to make it a success so there should not be a gap between the theory and practice whatever you learn you learn by doing so doing that is the practical aspects and significance of practice is very important from the manager's point of view also now instead of a scientific understanding of the human behavior and organizations managers continue to rely largely on their personal experiences also so this is another dilemma that even if the research says something else and their experience says something else they will rely more on the experience rather than the results which are obtained by the research so this is again a second dilemma which has to be solved and immediately solved to make a research process and its relevance to the business activities more important third this has been discussed in the journal of management studies volume number 46 by the british journal of management and volume number 21 why these certain evidences are given to you so that there is you can have a interface of what we say and what we do so these things are empirically proved in this particular journal also that you must practice number 1 and number 2 if you are having certain personal dilemmas that should not be in front of it because the results which are obtained by the research are definitely better than which are not obtained by the results uh, by by your personal experiences because your personal experiences say something else and the research say something else so you must rely on the results which are obtained by the research activities rather than your own personal experiences now according to saunders 2011 there is a differences between the academics and the practitioners operations because of the fussy of the interest methodological imperatives and the key outcomes and how each views the other practitioners and management research orientations here are mentioned and are highlighted in yellow basic understanding general enlightenment theoretical explanation why knowledge and substantive theory building the focus of interest here is i mean these are the interest for the management and when you talk about uh, the interest for the practitioners they uh, you know the usable knowledge they take the instrumental they take the practical problem solutions they take and how to knowledge and the local theory in use they take so these are the outcomes and the basic parameters which are most important to be understood by the practitioners and the management to make this a big success so uh, taking this into consideration you must rely on uh, the basics of research must practice the basic of research and if there is any dilemmas which the business managers are facing they must be cleared by the application of research activities and the research process and uh, if you have this kind of an orientation there is no point and no room for confusion and definitely there is a, a big thing which you have to take into consideration that the research gives you the informed choices and informed choices are definitely better than the uninformed choices so we have seen today the meaning of research the basic parameters of research how the theory and the practice is different the theoretical backdrop and the application of the research activities and how it is important for a manager to apply the activities of research and how it this can give you a mileage the good market penetration ratio and you know continue to solve your personal dilemmas personal experiences because the the result orientation is definitely better than to go on to your personal experiences or any kind of biasness in your knowledge so thank you so much
So today we are talking about here the research, the relevance of research. In this part of my lecture, I would be talking about the biases in the management sciences. Now ignoring the relevance gap would be unthinkable in other professional fields such as medicine or engineering. This makes management science more a design science rather than a social science. Design science perspective purpose of academic management research is therefore as a solution oriented research only to develop the valid knowledge to support the organizational problem solving. So here we talk about certain biasness. We see that uh, when you talk about the gaps, the gaps are more in case of management sciences and less are in case of the real sciences and the pure sciences that is the medicine and engineering. So it is definitely very very important to understand that there should not be any kind of a relevance or a gap between all these activities otherwise this is more of a design science rather than a practical science. Now coming on to the purpose of research, advancing knowledge, addressing business issues, solving the managerial problems, promoting the common good, understand and explain the impact of something such as particular policy, explore the ways in which the various organizations do different in-depth investigation of an organization within the context of a wider understanding of the process that we are operating and that we are generalizing. So definitely there is a very clear purpose of doing a research that is we are addressing some people, we are collecting the knowledge with a particular perspective, we are analyzing and whatever are the outcomes of the result, we are using it for a problem solving or a decision making. So these things are key important uh, or the key parameters for doing any kind of a research. We have a purpose, we have a relevance and whatever are the outcomes which are uh, coming out of, of the results of the research activities, they are used for policy making, for strategizing, for problem solving and for the vital decision making for the organization. So it is since a very pertinent and a vital activity, so there has to be a great care taken in all these parameters which are highlighted for the purpose of doing research. Because this is not a joke which we are cracking, we are doing actually a serious work. So all these key parameters have to be kept in mind and uh, you have to be very cautious and diligent while doing and collecting all these kind of information with you. All business management research projects can be replaced on a continuum according to their purpose and the context. That is we uh, you know we are now discussing a continuum starting from basic research to the applied research. Now the basic research when you do the basic purpose behind is is to expand the knowledge, the purpose of business and management. The results in universal uh, principles relating to the process and its relationship to the outcomes, findings of significance and the value to the society in general. So this is the basic concept and the purpose of doing a basic research that here the focus is just to expand the knowledge, to apply the basic principles of research and to have a very close relationship of doing research and its practical relevance. And of course, uh, what is the significance of the research uh, in terms of the value to the society in general? So these are the basic focus when you are doing a pure or a basic research. Now coming on to a different uh, topic altogether when you are discussing a continuum from the basic research to the applied research. So let us see what the applied research says to us. The applied research improves the understanding of a particular business or a management problem. So when you talk about and the difference between the basic research and the applied research is that the basic research is generalized in nature whereas the applied research is very focused and it relates to one particular business or one particular unit or one particular individual. So it is more focused, more narrow whereas the basic research is more general in nature and it envelops the society at large whereas the applied research is very specific in nature and it talks in, uh, takes into consideration a particular business concept. 
The results in solution to problem, the new knowledge is limited to a one particular problem which you start because it is very, very particular in nature when you are talking about the applied research and the findings of the practical relevance and the value to the managers in the organization. So this is a very clear cut differentiation between the two. The basic research is general whereas the applied research is very common uh, into one particular business problem. We start with one business problem, we try to find out the solutions and the outcomes will also be applicable to that particular manager or that particular institution or that particular organization. We cannot have a you know generalizations coming out from uh, that particular solution or to a one particular problem which we took in the applied research. So this is the basic differentiation which we have talked about and the differences uh, in a continuum when you talk about the basic research and the applied research. There is another significant difference which we will discuss now that is the context. The basic research context is undertaken by people based in universities, the choice of topic and objectives determined by the researcher and there is a flexible time scales. So this is a basic research context. Now let us talk about the applied research context. It is undertaken by the people based in a variety of settings including the organizations and universities. The objectives are negotiated with the originator and we have tight time scales in terms of applied research. So there is a huge difference between applied and uh, you know the, uh, the pure research or the basic research, the orientation is different, the contextual aspects are different, the foundations are different. But yes, the, the applicability and the usefulness also of the basic research is different from that of the applied research. Now there is an academic agenda that is the key consumer is the academic community with relativity little attention being given to its practical applications. This is often called as basic, fundamental or a pure research, unlikely that mode 2 and mode 3, some considerations of practical consequences which we talked about in the earlier part of my lecture. Whereas applied research is very direct, the outcomes are very immediate and the issues are very similar. So it's a kind of a consultancy which is you know very very significant and relevant to the managers of that organization. So the contextual is very narrow in this case whereas the contextual is very general in that case of the pure research. Now let us talk about a very important uh, aspect that how the research is carried on that is the basic process of the research. The precise number of stages varies from problem to problem, from individual to individual, but they usually include the formulation, the clarification of a topic, the reviewing of literature, designing the research, how the data has to be collected, how it is to be analyzed and how do we write up. So these are the basic stages which are very common. Maybe the nomenclature, uh, the, uh, the words which we use are different, but yes, the connotations and the basic focus of the research process remains the same. So we will discuss it in detail now. The research process is not rational and straightforward, number one. With what initially it appears uh, to be a great idea and when you eventually come on to that, it may not be good. The, uh, you know, it is an evolving kind of a thing. You start with something else and eventually you will have something else. This is what is called as research. That is you do again and again the same kind of an exercise and eventually the outcomes which you see, you must have never thought even before that this will be the consequences or the outcomes of that particular type of a research. The research move through each of the stages. However, not always in a chronological order. Because maybe you start something, uh, the purpose is very clear, everything is very clear, you have done the lit, you know, extensive literature review, but yes, there is a sudden change in the government policy. So whatever you have done is multiplied by zero. So that is why this is a very difficult stairs which you have to climb. It is a very diff difficult orientation which you have to do. So you have to be a very serious uh, researcher if you want to take up research activities because it is uh, to be very diligently done. It has to be very seriously done and maybe whatever you do may not be relevant in the future. So you may have to modify your work. 
So this, this, this becomes a part and the parcel of the process that your research activity must be dynamic, flexible because uh, the conditions under which we are living and residing, they are also dynamic in nature. So maybe the piece of uh, research which work which you start in the beginning may not be relevant because the relevance is most important. Like for example, we are doing uh, carbon trading activities in India. So you must be knowing that in 2010, all the carbon derivative trading market is off. So the people who were registered for PhD in their work, they have to modify their work or maybe they have to take certain global context into view or they have to, you know, work on the re-strategies that uh, how they can, uh, you know, revive that carbon market in India. So this is what the research is all about and this is what the process says that you have to sometimes modify, clear, in, uh, you know, include or embed certain changes which are dynamic in nature, only then it will be a big success. So, you know, you have to sometimes revisit your objectives, you have to reformulate your hypothesis, you have to reframe the circumstances under which you are doing the work. Each time you re revisit a stage, you will need to reflect on the associated issues and redefine your ideas. Because incorporating the new ideas, novation to your research work, revision to your research work, revisiting your objectives and hypothesis, it's a major part on exercise of the research process because you cannot have a static thing when you talk about the research. Now, th yes, there are certain important uh, things which you have to keep in mind when you are doing research. So, let us highlight that. One, you have to consider the ethical and excess issues during the process. Now, you know, I would like to expand on this. Like for example, you are working on a company called McDonald's or maybe you are working on a company called KFC. So they are all big multinationals. If you want to write on certain ethical issues about them or unethical issues about them or maybe you want to highlight certain soft drinks like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever. So this is, uh, you know, if you want to cite them or if you want to cite certain success strategies of any kind of a market product which you are interested in, you have to have the excess, uh, you know, the permissions from that particular company. If you do not take the permissions and you cite them, you can be in big trouble because, you know, the uh, accessibility of the information is there on the public domain. You can download any kind of a journal or from the paid sites, from the, uh, you know, the information which are available on the ministry's uh, website, etc., on the government portal, etc. But yes, if you're, whenever you're quoting them, you must have the ethical way to quote them. You have to have a very significant information which is uh, to be seeked from them, only then you can cite them. So th these are the things which can put you in trouble. Or, or maybe uh, if you do not refer to them or if you do not cite them properly, then also you can be in a big trouble. If you are just using one example for the classroom teaching, you have to give a disclaimer that yes, uh, the information which is used in this particular slide is only for the classroom teaching or just for the lecturing or for the academic reasons. We do not have any kind of a commercial reasons behind it. So you have to be categorical in this uh, regard. Otherwise, you can, uh, you know, put yourself in big trouble. And of course, the research means it's your own work. If you move on to somebody's other work or uh, say the plagiarized work or a self-plagiarism sometimes is also not allowed because, you know, these are the, uh, what do you call the protocols uh, of the research work which you have to be very clear about. Uh, you cannot say, take somebody else's work. If you want to show their work, you have to take their permissions, you have to properly cite them, then proper references must be mentioned uh, in this regard, only then uh, you are allowed allowed to do that. So whatever you do, you have to be very ethical in your working, you have to be ethical in your way of working and take, uh, you know, requisite permissions and required permissions. Only then you can move on with your research activities. So considering uh, the validity and the reliability of the data also, that is the, the credibility and the dependability of the data you intend to use. Now, for example, you are using, uh, you know, some kind of a financial uh, data of any particular company. The most authentic website is to use the company's own website in which, uh, uh, since it's a public limited company, so they have to put every information on their company portal and their websites. So to download from them is a very reliable and a dependable source. But if you use certain, uh, you know, uh, websites which are uh, into the data activities or something, you do not have the confidence in them. So please 
please do not use such websites. The websites which are compatible with the statistics and the data and approved by the government, like if you want to uh, take certain data of the Indian economy, we have a very good portal uh, uh, on the Reserve Bank of India website. Yeah, you know, there is a statistics of the Indian economy and it's the most authentic way. You have uh, in downloadable format, you have in a PDF format, you have that in the Excel format, plus you have the approval of the government in that case. So whatever data sources you will take must be authentic must be verified, must be dependable, only then whatever the work you do will be dependable. If you take certain websites which are uh, al already plagiarized and they have no dependability, sometimes the data is blocked, sometimes the website is over, so there is no authenticity of your work also then. So it is consequential, your dependability of your work is uh, you know, dependable on the, the reliability of the data websites you have taken in your research work. So taking it forward, the ideas get further clarified, revisiting stages including the research questions and objectives and working through them again and again. Appropriateness and suitability of the analytical techniques is also important. For example, in statistics, uh, the minimum data which we use uh, to a particular statistical package is maybe 30. And of course, if the n number is good, in if n is large, you tend to have more generalizations, you tend to have more accuracy in your results because if you, uh, you cannot take the whole universe into account when you are researching, then you have to depend upon a sample. The sample size should be good. There are particular tests to, uh, you know, verify your uh, adequacy of your sample size. And this, if the sample size is small, the generalizations will not be there. So you should try and work with the larger sample, with the high frequency data, with the number of uh, data again which is accurate. And the size, if it is large, only then you will come on to the right and the accurate results. Otherwise, there would be a biasness in results. Uh, because maybe the sample which you have collected uh, does not have that uh, representative qualities in them uh, because the sample data which you collect uh, uh, care is not taken to collect, uh, you know, have that or the random sample which you have taken is also not good. So it is better to have a larger uh, amount of data with you so that you have a representation of the larger population and uh, of course the summarization and the analysis which you do uh, from that larger uh, population would also be very, very good and accurate and dependable and more people will be you know appreciating your work because you have done the work on a larger sample data size rather than on a very small niche of the data. Then of course the reflection and reflexivity of your work. The process of observing your own research practice and examining the way you do things is termed as a reflection. More complex reflexivity incorporating the interpretation and questioning the way you have done it. Reflection and reflexivity are important for learning because it is very important uh, that you must observe your own work. As a researcher, if you have taken certain uh, techniques into considerations, maybe the research techniques which you have taken into considerations at that point of time you thought they were good. But in the evolution process when you were actually practicing uh, the aspects, so you know taking into consideration the practical aspects or uh, later on you realize that the activities which you have taken are not good. So, you know, that you can revise your work, you can revisit your work or maybe you can revise your methodology, etc. So, uh, reflection and reflexivity is very important to make your work more pertinent, more good, more accurate. So, as a researcher, you must do it. Then comes the learning cycle. The learning process is an ongoing process and it has a four-stage cycle first you have to con you have to have a concrete experience two observation and reflection in relation to the experience three forming the abstracts concepts generalizations from these observations and reflections four testing these concepts and generalizations in new situations the entire cycle repeats that is reflection here would be stopping and thinking about a concrete experience and subsequent forming the concepts and generalization so we can apply what you have learnt from your experiences and in the new situations. 
Now, for example, uh, you were doing some research work on the Reserve Bank of India. After the demonetization, the strategies have changed. The way you make the payments has changed. The business cycle, uh, you know, is altogether on a different frontier. You have to have the e-wallets with you. You have to make, uh, uh, you know, the payments with you. There is a limit on the number of cash transactions and so on and so forth. So, whatever earlier you were using uh, in the research activities is now altogether has got no relevance after the demonetization was introduced uh, by our Prime Minister. So, of course, uh, these things you have to have a very, uh, that is why the reflective activities are most important to revisit uh, your work because it is always happening with one or the other researcher that the, the things which they start with and the things which they end with is altogether different. Again, because of the changes in the government policies, changing in the paradigms, changing in the way the Indian economy is moving or there is a changes in the global context uh, for that matter. So, you have to have a reflective activity is definitely going to make your research work better. So, given the benefits of learning, it is not surprising that many universities require students to write a reflective essay or a reflective practices statement as a part of assessment of their research project. So, it is a kind of a statement which the researcher will give themselves that is uh, a throwback, a throwback of what they did and a throwback of what they are doing. So, you know, the, you start with one uh, objective, the, the dynamism because of the changing circumstances, you move on to another objective. So, that is why whenever we write a research proposal, we always write this is the tentative chapter profile. Because why do we write a tentative chapter profile? Because you do not know what will happen next moment, what will happen to our economy, what will happen to the global economy. So, what will happen to the international indices? What will happen to the uh, international investors? What will happen to a foreign direct investment? What happens to the foreign inflows? Uh, what will happen to the government policies, uh, the international policy framework, the international protocols? And of course, by and large, we have to revisit everything because of the climate change. Because when you talk about the climate change and sustainability, all these parameters have to be embedded and incorporated in the policy network also. Why? Because of the climate change, uh, nobody can compromise uh, for the pollution, the polluter pay principle, you know, and uh, definitely who is polluting the market, they have to, you know, take care of this aspect that we do not have a climate, uh, you know, we do not have a planet B. So, we have to restore our planets. So, everything has to be revisited, re-reflected and uh, revised because you do not know what is what change is going to be introduced in the coming years. So, taking these into parameters, a researcher is asked to write on the reflective work uh, as a part of his the project work. So, what will we recover? Choosing a suitable research topic, one, how to turn the ideas into a clear research question that is the aims and objectives, number two, number three, how to write your research proposals, number three, the critical literature review, four, you have to consider the range of secondary and the primary literature and definitely what are the sources available. Range of search strategies is also very important because some people they do not understand how to search the work, how to add on a good uh, you know paid papers which are there on the very good websites like JSTOR, uh, on the Google Scholar in which they can download the best pieces of research work so that they can build their own. Unless and until you know how, what people have done, how can you make your own? So, it is most important that is to find out the research gap the literature review, the deep literature review and the studies done in India and the studies done abroad. So, a brief synoptic view has to be prepared. Only then you will be able to find out and formulate your right hypothesis which will be carried on onto your research work and to make your research work more significant and more relevant in the contemporary era. Identifying the keywords. Now, you must know that uh, you know what are the keywords. Keywords, they help us in searching of your work. For example, I have done a work on foreign direct investment and its impact on the global domestic product or the global national product. Because you know that the exports and the foreign direct investment, they are the building blocks for the Indian economy. So, this is a very statement, very common statement where the commerce people and the economics people, they are very sure about this statement. But yes, how to do it empirically? So, all these practical significance, all these parameters will have to 
to be taken care of and anyone who wants to like I give you this example that I want to do a research on this activity. So how will I search somebody's work? So when you mention uh, the keywords like for example FDI that is the foreign direct investment, GNP that is the gross national product or maybe the FIIs that is the foreign institutional investors then uh, you have to have five to six keywords which help in searching of the work done in India and abroad. So once you have their own work you have uh, the international work with you international framework with you you have download those papers have uh, read the abstracts very carefully because the abstract is divided in four parts. What are the objectives of your research? What is the methodology which the people have used? What are the results and what are the implications? So if you even uh, uh, do not read the papers uh, in depth, if you have a brief synoptic view of the abstracts which you have already taken, so this is going to help you in searching the work. So the keywords have to be very cautiously given because the other researchers would also understand that uh, if we, we put these words, these are the papers which they are going to derive from the internet and of course the researcher will be benefited because he would have the n number of studies which have been done in Indian context and the global context and then he can build his own framework, he can formulate his own objectives and hypothesis for which to make his work more significant and relevant in this era. Nowadays there we have the online libraries, we have the online databases with us. So the search uh, keywords and the search words they also help in these codes. Now there is one other parameter which I would like to highlight here that we have certain codes with us, J codes. So J codes also help us in understanding, you know, the J codes will highlight the methodologies which you have used like J60, J90, etc. So, you know, the people who are uh, king of their research work, they know that if uh, these codes have been used, that means the paper is very, very good and it is empirical in nature. If it is theoretical, you have to put certain other J codes and the J codes are always mentioned when you talk about any of the research paper which is indexed in the Scopus listed research journals. So, you know, uh, the search for the keywords, the search for the codes are most important, significant aspect of making your research work available to the outside world and in the public domain. Mm. So these things have to be kept in mind because uh, the recording time, the putting uh, the work on your, uh, you know, online, etc. These are going to help you. So there is definitely some issues relating to the gaining access to the research ethics, how to gain access to both organizations and to individual using traditional and internet mediated strategies. Potential ethical issues are discussed in relation to each stage of the research process which have already been discussed and the different data collection methods, issue of data protection and a range of probability and non-probability sampling techniques, why sample is necessary and the issues of the sample size. So all these issues are very pertinent and very important and of course you have to be very clear about your leakage scales, your response rates your choices of the sampling techniques because uh, for, a, for a different research topics the suitability of the research methodologies and the uh, you know the techniques is different. If your uh, sample size is small uh, the methods are different, if your sample size is large the method is different because uh, the techniques for assessing the representativeness of those who respond is also different. So we have two types of data with us primary data and secondary data. Primary data is basically collected yourself with your own orientation which has more accuracy and you have different types of parameters involved into it, in-depth uh, information like group interviews, data collection techniques are very direct and you can rely more on the primary data than on the secondary data because the secondary data which you collect, it has its own objective behind it. Of course, they are not bad but you have to match your objective with the data which has been reported on the websites and uh, the secondary data which has been published by the government portals also and the questionnaires which you make uh, should be more uh, good uh, it should be self competent uh, it should be you know serving a lot of uh, different purposes the reliability and uh, the other issues must be taken care of when you're making the uh, the questionnaire it should be a combination of open-ended question and the uh, closed-ended questions uh, in front of you so that the information which you're trying to collect from that uh, questionnaire is also very very good so the approaches should be good to analyze the data, 
um, you know the nature of the qualitative data is very important the deductive based and inductive based analytical approaches are also important and finally the structure content and style of your final project report and the associated presentation is also very important so i hope you have understood uh, the basic uh, foundations of research thank you so much with this note thank you ma'am thank you so very much for giving us a, a very very uh, deep uh, insightful lecture and dear friends we believe that your feedbacks are very very important do write to us at info.cc@data.nic.in we would be meeting again soon and would be conducting a session on a new topic till then take care goodbye thank you ma'am thank you so very much